I'm really happy to be back in Toronto reading. So I'm going to read from a long poem. There's actually 30 poems in this longer poem, but I won't read all 30. And I won't tell you when the new poem starts, so you, you, you can be okay. <laughs> Testimonium. Unafraid, she takes her own hair by the fistful. Your darling, undoubtedly, deserving or not, offers penitence with a punishment. This is unacceptable. Each privation forbidden to her, by her, gradually, affections will become more harmful, vengeful, seething. She confuses murmurs with furies, shuns night company. Stupefied, you are not capable of being moved. Apologist, you seem different. You want more decent, measured speech, meeker language. Your darling concedes she has always been present from the beginning. Her entrance was neither deceptive nor delicately feigned. Unabraded, bitten hands, your darling explains the excessive, the manic, calm as constraint. Each agitation won't cease to affect her. Bitten hands, bitten lip, the eventual, provoked, convinces you. The inappropriate, of course, reciprocal. Your darling repeats, hysteric, sickeningly, always unwilling to please. In such a state, she is not. Your sonorous body, your nervous type, offer a sympathy, an indelicate subtlety. It's certain that she can't explain her association in relation to, at the same time, her confinement. Responsive to your state of vigilance, who celebrates a shriveling? Turn your back upon the tightening deductive. How perceptive your closest contradictions. Uncertainly citing against her absence of extravagance, poise, charm. Your darling reveals her strength in proportion to her weakness. Pell-mell, discriminately personal, vainly sumptuous. She returns with uncontrolled moments of joy, unmeasured. Forgets how quickly and assuredly she once withdrew, unvanquished. A rose is a rose, a ruse is a ruse, and ceaselessly she gave up, abandoned heart and vitriol. Your darling is vulgar in all of her violet forms. An aspect of repetition. Each subsequent act derived from the gentleness of brief pleasure. Beholden, she meant to didn't mean to without discipline. Your darling, insufficiently restricted, hesitates in proportion the way you would have her, diminished, precisely lacking, her taint spreads at threatening speed. In fact, this is constant, complicit with failure. When your darling is surrounded by others, by all others, she hears the detailed various she said, she did in more recent times, less legitimately constrained. Remorse, in reckoning the intricacies. Your darling will choose an example, taken, a burdensome note. Another example given from elsewhere. There will be no confusion about the admittance. Her resistance was not exceptional. Her supplice, after losing restraint, exquisite pain. Dissipate the cherished at the astonishing rate, apropos of the villain. You were born out of naught, no background, no origin, in a double sense, no story, duplicitous. Take back with your hands what you gave with your mouth. Rescind the intolerable, then make distant. Consider your darling docile, efface her, sorry, compulsory and accumulated, reveled less sincere. Never call her by her name, your darling, clandestine. Such is not possible, unless, of course, such is possible. Continue to writhe, for there has always been curiosity, strict inquisitions, you are insidious, where have you been, with whom? You're permitted versus that unbidden, unexplained. 
as if the encounter took place without you, denial of the witness, the absolute privilege of unknowing, impossible, there is no identity of even you, accuser. A privilege. She was not so much, or not only, or not in any way fundamental. She was rather in service to your excess, especially, or rather, for the most part, she was alone. The push of your hands is useless, deceitful, insidious, her being without being seen, constantly under your gaze, her down, quiet, smothering. You are not comporting properly, strong whole of the body, she is flawed, quite flawed. No and no, specifically, you are rigorous, don't begin, your darling displayed, look who can. She is neither heartened nor consoled, most vigilant or not sleeping, unmoved by any outward sign. No doubt, each redress, each redress will spurn you, affronted, portrayed out of proportion, bruiser. No doubt, her incorrect tone becomes baleful, an example given to others. She dares an indirect reply, sudden cunning, slackened, shameful, of course your opinion, your conviction. She shall not cease your most horrible cry, word for word, her salutary objection. She lives, she lives wicked. Thank you.